Hi, I'm Coach Cowden, and in this presentation, we're going to look at energy. So, what do you think energy is? What kinds of energy do you know about? What is energy used for? And what else do you know about energy? Have a think about those things, jot them down, pause the, the video, and then we'll move on. So, um, some of you may think, when you think about energy, something like this. So this is a picture of lightning or plasma here and you can see it um, and it's a great visualization and yes it is a form of energy but how would you define it? Energy is not one of those things that's really easy to define. It's kind of tricky and elusive but I did a little bit of homework and this is the definition of energy. It is the ability to perform work. Now work in this sense is not the same as work like going to work or homework or school work. It's, uh, it's work in the physics sense and we will come on to defining what work is in a much more exact and mathematical way down the line. But right now that is a clear and crisp definition of energy. So here's some other ways to think about energy. Energy is something that you need to create a change. If you want something to happen, you need to put energy into it. Or well, energy is going to come out of it. Um, energy can be stored, and stored energy is called potential energy. It's like when someone says that they see potential in you. You have the potential to be really good at sports, for example. You are not that yet, but that is within you. And it's the same with energy. Um, energy, not only can it be stored, it can be used. Uh, the one interesting thing about energy is that it can't be created or destroyed. You can take energy from one form and you can put it into another form, but you can't actually completely get rid of it. It might not be useful to you, but it's still there. That is mathematically extremely important, and you'll see why later. So the units, the SI units of energy are the joule. Um, and that is the unit also, interestingly, of work. So what forms of energy might we find? Well, there's many forms of energy. The first one that we're looking at here is mechanical energy. In the next presentation, we're going to look much more closely at different types of mechanical energy and potential energy. How can you store potential energy? Now to the right over here we have a spring and this spring when it's compressed is actually a way of storing energy. Um, elastic potential energy to be exact. Over here we also we have a, another very obvious idea of energy which is heat. Whenever this something is being, being heated it, there is thermal energy there. Um, one of the ones that one of the form of energy that might not be so obvious is this, which is food. Food is chemical energy. Gasoline, which you put in your car, is another form of chemical energy. Otherwise, your car wouldn't move. If you didn't eat food, you wouldn't move. So these are forms of energy that help you to do the things that help your car to do the things that they need to. Um, you might find this is a little bit of a surprise. Why do I have these masses here? There's a kilogram and there's a 500 gram and things like that. Well, mass and energy are identical twins in effect. Mass can become energy. Energy can become mass. The Einstein's equation E equals mc squared is, the, is how much energy that you get out of a certain amount of mass. And in fact, this uh, unusual diagram here is actually a trace of what happens when a gamma ray, which is ra radiation energy, turns into mass. And these two spiraling objects, the one to the left and the one to the right, is a positron and an electron. The opposites of each other in terms of charge, but they have exactly the same mass. And they did not exist before the gamma radiation hit the target and created them. So an analogy that I like to use with energy is like money. And um, bear with me with this. Um, money comes in all different forms. You can have the coins in your pockets. You can have um, 
banknotes, you can have credit cards, uh, savings, uh, bonds, whatever. But they are all money. And if you, um, if the same, if there's a set amount of money in circulation, that money can change shapes and it can change forms and it can change owners. But that same money stays in circulation it just keeps on going around and around and around it just exchanges hands and it just exchanges types whatever however much you started with is effectively the same as at any point over the course of time and you, sh you should end up with exactly the same amount of money and this is identical to energy energy changes forms it changes shapes it changes owners but it never changes the amount there's always the same amount there it's just somewhere else and this leads us to what's called conservation of energy that's a, a basically a summing up of what we've just said uh, when you conserve energy it means that you know how much there is to, um, at the end because you knew how much there was at the beginning and you know that energy can't be created and it can't be destroyed now conservation of energy occurs in what's called a closed system a closed system is one, if you can imagine, a completely sealed box or a completely sealed room with a bunch of people in there. No one comes in, no one comes out. So if you take a count at the beginning, then the count at any other period of time, just like we said with the money, it stays exactly the same. Open systems and closed systems are one of the things that we're going to be dealing with in physics. Um, a great example of a closed system is the universe. The universe is a entirely closed system nothing can come into it nothing can leave it which means interestingly that energy has been conserved through the universe which means that the energy that we have today is equal to the amount of energy that was around during the big bang and at every second in between now when we look at real systems um, rather than theoretical systems and in theoretical systems a lot of the time we say closed systems and perfect systems and that um, we, uh, we we make certain assumptions and generalizations so for example we may assume that there's no friction now there's friction in just about everything and we're going to talk about you we've already talked about friction in forces but uh, when you when there's friction it generates heat and when you you've generated heat energy you've taken away from mechanical energy so there's no mechanical system that is absolutely perfect where you wouldn't lose energy to a different form so um, seeing actual conservation of energy happen in real life is extremely difficult it's possible to see on the atomic level and it's possible to see on, on the universal level but to see it in real life is extremely difficult we may get very close but not really um, it, we can't really see it so here's a thought for you uh, which ones of these are closed systems and which ones of these are open systems remember closed systems are systems where energy stays in them and no energy comes in no energy leaves an open system is one where energy in some way shape or form can enter or leave I'm not going to give you the answers to these I want you to think about them and make notes and we'll discuss them in class so the first one is the universe and I've already given you some quite significant clues about that the second one is the planet including its atmosphere third one your body next one a car fifth one a non-stop pendulum a pendulum that keeps on going eternally and the billy balls on a pool table okay thanks for watching